Hello and welcome to Wall Street Training's LBO Leverage Buyout Overview course. Please note that these materials are copyrighted and may not be disseminated or reproduced for any reason without express written consent from Wall Street Training. Let's now turn our attention to the sources and uses of funds, one of the most important exhibits you can possibly find. Sources and uses, again, gives you a clear and concise summary of the sources of funds. Where am I getting the money from? Where am I getting money from? And uses is what am I going to uh, pay off in this LBO transaction? One of the most important because this provide, uh, provides a detailed step-by-step -step explanation of where the money is going and where it's coming from. Typically, you would have, for instance, in your uses of funds, which is what you might calculate first, how much are you paying for the equity, how much are you refinancing of any debt if you are, as well as any additional fees. That's your uses of funds. Then you go back and say, well, based on the amount of capital I need, as well as your refinancing scenarios that we briefly talked about before, what this now says is what? Where are you going to get the money from? Your sources of funds. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get X dollars from my private equity firms, and I'm going to get Y dollars from the banks, and I'm going to use part of my cash if I made excess cash on the books to fund this acquisition. Some notes on this. Typically, again, you start by calculating uses of funds. You decide whether or not to refinance the existing debt. You add in other expenses, costs, tender costs, debt refinancing fees, transaction fees, etc. Then you calculate the sources of funds. Use the excess cash on a balance sheet, if any. That's really great. Why? Because you don't have to come out with your own capital. Use the company's own money to pay for itself. Any new debt borrowed, that's going to be key there. And of course, typically, we will use the revolver to fully maximize the debt capacity. So we can maximize, here we'll say, maximize our borrowings which again ties back into our additional debt capacity because that is where we will figure out how much money can we fully borrow. Now I have a comment in here as well that there's an alternate approach where we say you will fix the equity contribution amount and then use the revolver to bounce source and uses. We don't like this. This is less ideal. Why? Because we want to again maximize the borrowings. We'll talk a lot more about this in our complex leverage buyout modeling section. Now, going on to the next slide, let's talk about equity sources. This is going to be important here. Let's first look at the no rollover. Very straightforward. All we're saying is the following. We needed to borrow, uh, we needed to come up with $4.26 billion to fund our LBO from equity sources. Now, this equity sources simply gives you a breakdown from the sources of funds, where are you going to attain your equity from? What's important here is this will include or should include an analysis on whether or not the existing management team and or role of equity invests in the post-LBO entity. Typically, the answer is yes for, for the management because you want to continue incentivizing them. What is rollover, however? Rollover is an existing shareholder. Rollover is an existing shareholder that is different from the primary equity sponsor or acquired. This is a mouthful. Rollover equity is an existing shareholder who already owns the company, already has a stake, but it's different from their primary sponsor. Why? What this means is the following. If you have a sponsor, an equity sponsor who comes in and says, well, I don't want to come up with all this 4.2, or rather, there's an existing sponsor who wants to stay in the firm, stay in the company, but I can't get rid of them. Why can't I get rid of them? Because they have too much of a stake and they might vote, vote no against the deal. So in our example of yes rollover, what we're saying is the following. Let's pretend that we have a rollover equity who currently owns 6% of the company. They will roll all of their shares into the company. They will end up effectively owning 21% of the company post-transaction. In other words, let's go through the illustration on the bottom left-hand corner of this slide in a second. Let's go through the implications first. The more management and the more rollover equity, the smaller the ownership that the core equity holders will get. Why? Because you are basically sharing your proceeds and your profits. That sounds obvious, but here's the deal. The rollover equity folks essentially invest with pre-money dollars. They invest with pre-money dollars. They buy in at the company at a cheaper price. This also, by the way, affects the accounting treatment. So let's talk about that later on. We'll get to the accounting treatment section. Why is it that magic happens and you go from a 6% to suddenly a 20% equity stake? Let's take a look at the numbers. Let's say you buy this company and you pay $14.8 billion for this company. You need, per your LBO sources and uses, $4.2 billion of equity. In the no rollover scenario, there is no rollover, 0%. What that means is, how much is the rollover equity contributing to that purchase price? Zilch. 
zero. How much do you, the primary equity sponsor, have to contribute? The full $4.26 billion. What this means is you, the primary equity sponsor, owns 100%. The rollover owns zero. That's straightforward and that's pretty obvious. Now, let's look at it with the rollover. What we're saying is as follows. You are buying the company out for $14.8 billion. You need a total of 4.26 new equity to buy all 14.8. Rollover currently owns 6%. So they will contribute all of their 6% stake into the new company. How much does that equate to? Well, listen. The whole company is currently worth 14.871. They own 6% of that. Therefore, their 6% equity stake is worth $892 million. So what that means is you are not going to have to buy them out. Again, this A92, you're saying not have to pay for. But they still get value. How much value? Well, they get the exact same 892. So what they say is we will now put in our $892 as if. This is similar to saying as if you went and found another buddy, another private equity sponsor said, give me 892 million bucks and you'll be one of our private equity sponsors in this deal as well. And of course, you see plenty of that going on these days with the massive amount of um, uh, consortiums, uh, private equity consortiums that are pulling together to buy massive amount of comp massive size companies. So here what we're saying is your $14.87 billion is at a 6% stake, you have $892 worth of value. But I'm not paying you for that value. I'm the private equity primary sponsor. I'm not paying you for your rollover 6%. Therefore, I will allow you to roll your $892 million into the new entity. Therefore, if I had to, before I had to pay $4.26 billion, and you are contributing $892 of that, how much is the amount of equity that I got to put in? Simply the difference. And if the difference says I only have to put in $33.68, uh, therefore, of this $33.68, the entire new equity is $42.60. I will effectively end up owning 79% of the company which means you, the rollover, will now end up owning 20.9, 21% of the entire company. So that's how your 6% stake on a pre-money valuation, because now it's the same dollar amount, 892, but of a significantly smaller percentage of the equity pie, you now own a significantly greater stake. That is the advantage of being a rollover equity. Yes, they could decide to cash out, take the 892 million bucks, and run for the door. But if they see the value in the LBO going forward, they may decide to say, let me stick to my money inside the LBO because now I'm going to make another series and another layer of returns potentially. Again, the rationale, the explanation is the private equity sponsor is not buying out the rollover and therefore does not need to pay the 892 bucks, which is now a part of the new equity sources. This means that the equity rollover is peri passu, the same equal footing, same equal footing as the primary equity sponsor. That is what rollover equity is. Again, that's also going to have serious implications on our accounting treatment if you decide to try to elect to get recap accounting. We'll talk more about that.